If I were to ask you, what is the most scary thing you could think of? What would it be? Heights? Dying? The eerie darkness or even spiders? If you were to ask me, the most scary thing would be our own bodies, or to be more specific, this distortion of our bodies. See, I remember a nightmare I had from when I was young. Though the details are mostly shrouded, some things still remain. In this particular dream, my legs, my hands and my arms started to continuously grow and shrink. After a while, so did my surroundings. The world was morphing and distorted uncontrollably. Though through my short description, it might not sound as so scary, but for a five-year-old kid, the feeling of losing track of the world around me certainly has left a mark. Something that takes me back to that certain fear and nightmare is the work of a manga artist, Junji Ito. Before I show you exactly what I mean, let's get to know this man. Who is the person behind these works of art? Junji Ito was born on the 31st of July 1963 in Sakashita, now Nakatsugawa, a former town from the Gifu prefecture in Japan. From an early age, Junji Ito dabbled into the world of horror. His two elder sisters would often read Kasui Umesu and Shinichi Koga's horror mangas. He began writing and drawing manga as a hobby around 1984, while he was still working as a dental technician. His humble hobby as a manga artist would change in 1987, the year he published Tomi through the shoujo magazine Monthly Halloween. Following the publishment of Tomi, Ito won the 1989 Kasuo Umesu Prize. In hindsight, this was the moment Ito's career took off for real. As his career took off, Junju Ito got well known for his particular style of art. A very special and unique way to convey the author's intention to his readers. Rather than I explain it, I figure it's better you see for yourself. Junji Ito uses horror as his media to tell stories, to make you, the reader, feel something. The world that Ito makes are distorted, twisted, and unpredictable, and it is exactly this kind of storytelling that has gotten Junji Ito worldwide renowned. Let's dive a bit deeper to exactly what Ito does in his works. He has stated that fellow artist Kasue Umesu Hideshi Hino, Shinichi Koga, Erogawa Ranpo, and H.P. Lovecraft as being major influences for his work. See, the universe that Ito creates, the whole world he makes, is cruel and capricious. If you were to read his works of art, you would quickly realize that the characters of his stories often share a similar fate. The characters would often be victims of malevolent, unnatural, and to some degree, unexplainable circumstances for no discernible reason. An example of this is the short story Long Sleep, or Nagayume, from the Junji Ito horror comic collection. This is a story about a patient named Tetsuro Mukoda, who has an unknown and untreatable illness. A condition making his dreams feel exponentially longer each night. From days to weeks, weeks to months, then months to years, Tetsuro Mikoto's unpleasant dreams grow without boundaries, and this takes a severe toll on him, both mentally and physically. This is the art that Ito masters the art of body horror. See, this isn't the only story by Ito where the characters experience a horrific transformation of their own bodies. 
What's become almost like a trademark for Ito is his grotesque distortions of the human body. Arguably, the most well-known work of Ito is Uzumaki. It is not the goriest, nor the scariest, and not the most flashy story Ito has created. However, the way Ito illustrated his world goes beyond incomprehensible, to say the least. Imagine you living in your hometown, minding your own business. Your days goes on as the usual. Then suddenly, one day, spirals of all things start to show up. The grass, the hair of other people, people that suddenly begun obsessing with the spirals. It is everywhere. And eventually, the people themselves turned into spirals. That was the reality for the citizens of Kuroscho, the town where the story took place. I won't go into details, but if you are curious, I strongly encourage you to read this story. One would think that some simple spirals couldn't even be remotely scary. It is not the first thing we think about as scary, right? It is not the dark, it is not height, it is not spiders nor the deep dark unknown ocean. So how does Ito create such a gruesome and grotesque world from spirals? As mentioned before, Ito is a master at body horror. The art of intentionally showcasing grotesque or psychological disturbing violations of the human body. That aspect is especially displayed in Yusumaki. In this story, Ito moves and distorts not only the characters involved, but also the world in a way the reader never really seen before. The art is very detailed, each stroke of ink is deliberately placed. The facial emotions display genuine feelings, feelings of distress, pain or suffering. One thing Ito does often in his works is to tell the story where the point of view is underneath the main content, thus making it appear more grand and powerful. We can see Ito is a master at bending reality and our perception of reality to his will. What's interesting is that in Isomaki and all of Ito Aldo's works is the feeling of a certain uneasiness. You feel something from each page of the stories, whether it be disgust, discomfort or even curiosity. Junji Ito works make you feel Normally, the feeling of disgust and discomfort will make you reject something. However, it is very different here. Yes, I feel somewhat repulsed reading through the pages, but I also feel a strange sense of curiosity. Maybe it's the insane detailing Ito puts in each frame. The bloodshot eyes of a character gone mad. The scarily accurate details on a grossly transformed human body. Or maybe it's the incomprehensible scenarios. I am presented with. Regardless, the way Jinji Ito bends reality to something morbidly grotesque is what really captures the reader's attention. Jinji Ito has forever etched his spot onto the Horror Hall of Fame. Through the years, he has built and established his own legacy within the Western and Japanese contemporary horror. A pioneer within the horror genre, Ito rarely used pre-established monster archetypes within his work. Instead, Ito focused on taking reality as we know it and bending it, subverting and defamiliarizing the ordinary world to unsettle his readers. If you gain some curiosity after watching this video, I strongly encourage you to do your own research and read some of Jinji Ito's work. As the experience from reading through the stories firsthand it's so much better than me explaining it. Thank you so much for watching the video, but at the same time, I really apologize for the long hiatus. I will try to stay active again and I'm so thankful for the recent positive feedback I've gotten. I truly appreciate it. If you have any suggestions on the video ideas, please leave them in the comment as I read through every single one. And as always, Thank you for making it this far into the video, you're a real one for that, stay curious.